All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, talking about the 2023 World Road Racing Championships in Glasgow, Scotland, home of what they've dubbed the Super Worlds. I think we talked about it at the tour, but uh, almost every event, except for cyclocross, um, will be contested here in Glasgow. What they're also saying is the largest sporting event ever uh, in, in Scotland, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, fantastic win by Matthew Vanderpool. We're going to break down all the action and, 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 uh, Johan has an opportunity to, uh, uh, to come at us over something that he said, I looked at the date. It was back in April, but before we get into all the action today's show brought to you by Caldera lab. Now we all know first impressions matter. If you're not taking care of your skin, that's going to be the first thing someone notices and instantly either thinks you're way older <laughs> than you are or just don't care about your appearance like George. Show them that you do and make a great first impression. Now, here's a question. Yoan, do you brush your teeth at night before you go to bed? Of course. JB? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. All right. I won't ask George because, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just make it part of your routine. Before you brush your teeth and go to bed, boom. Take care of that face. You don't want to look any older than you are. Um, scientifically proven to help reduce uh, um, wrinkles and aging and uh, be totally optimized. Special offer for our listeners. Head on over to calderalab.com slash the move. Again, calderalab.com slash the move. You get 20% off and you get to look younger. Also today brought to you by Ventum. This is our go-to whip, whether it's on the road, the NS1, on the gravel. George went for a gravel ride today. He's going to tell us about that because he, he had a fun little experiment, which I actually think is, I'm going to try what you tried today, George, but save it. Save it for the show because okay. pretty interesting. Uh, their all-new GS1 is now available in the minted colorway, built exclusively with SRAM Apex AXS, all for just 2999 bucks. By the way, only 2999 bucks. It's a killer deal because it is actually the same carbon frame that you get on the higher end specs. So basically means same bike that George and I ride. Pretty awesome. They're also uh, making great content. If you want to feel inspired, get inspired, get out there and hammer, head on over to their socials, either Instagram or YouTube. Uh, that stuff is at, uh, at Ventum Racing. You also get 10% off when you use the code we do over at checkout at VentumRacing.com slash the move. I can do the math on that. A, gra- a badass gravel bike for three grand. Use that code. You get 10%. Look, keeps coming down. Also today brought to you by HVMN. HVMN launched the world's first drinkable ketone in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with improved effectiveness, taste, and cost. Ketone IQ also delivers clean fuel that can cross the blood-brain barrier, supplying your brain and body sustained energy, focus, and sharpness. You can save 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ at hvmn.com slash the move. Again, that's hvmn.com slash the move. Speaking of HVMN, I, uh, y'all know this, but the audience doesn't. Maybe it, maybe they do if they were watching the pay-per-view. I, I went to Dallas last night with my son to watch the Jake um, Paul Nate Diaz boxing match. And I was, uh, of course, uh, Jake and Jeffrey Wu, our co-founders of HPMN. So it was, it was, we were all part of that process. I got to say, I was impressed. I was, I was, this Jake Paul's a fucking beast. Straight up. That's he amazing. Did, he won the flight. Fight, he huh? beat, he beat Diaz. And we hung with both those guys, both Diaz and um, Jake after the fight. But um, the thing I like about it is, is, uh, uh, and it was wild when he walked in, I thought, I thought this guy's, he's like, got all these, fans and all these followers and all this shit he walks out and i mean this place i was like holy cow like 95 percent of the people in here are booing him it was insane but he ended up winning the fight uh but what i love about it is you know we're doing the exact same thing right we're creating content we're sitting here doing podcasts a bunch of people are listening i like him he epitomizes forward never straight you know, he, yeah. he just well, kept I, his head down and kept working yeah. and he's, he's a badass. He trained and, and by all accounts, I've not trained with him, although I would love to, uh, he trains his ass off. Like he, he yeah. this isn't, this isn't YouTube, right? He, he <laughs> really, really trains and tries. You, hung out, you, you hung out with him before the fight or after the fight? 
No, not before. I wouldn't get in anybody's way before the fight. But how, uh, how beat how beat up were they? Were they pretty messed up or not? Not, uh, not so bad. Diaz was was a little nicked up, but um we were uh, just sitting there waiting for uh, Jake and Diaz walks by and uh, one of his guys like, dude, that's Lance Armstrong. He's like, come say hi to Nate. <laughs> and I was that's like, uh, okay. I, I, uh, so we were, you know, it was cool. Anyways, let's talk about the world championships. 271 kilometers. I know it's a long way. It's 160 miles. And y'all, y'all know I nerd out on vertical stuff. So 11,000 vertical feet of climbing. Um. Which is, it, 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 we can get in more too about the circuit because I know we all have thoughts. But Matthew Vanderpool and Johan, listen, I know you're sitting there just, yeah, look at him. Look at him. Just, <laughs> just, just wringing his hands. Uh, 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 uh. But look, these two riders, um, well, actually, that final group, as I told you all in the pre meeting or the pre show, was uh, to me sort of the Mount Rushmore of the current classics crop. With uh, Matthew Vanderpool, Wild Fine Art, Taddy Pogachar, and, and um, Mats Peterson. Mats Peterson. But uh, you know, it, it, it came to Matthew Vanderpool. The guy just, man, he just he, he didn't have a good tour. He didn't. He looked like something was off. Maybe there was mm-hmm. talk about an illness or, or uh, just a uh, a minor sickness that he couldn't shake. But holy moly, today was the day. First oh, rider, yeah. first rider, last, sorry, real quick. First rider to ever uh, win the cycle across worlds and the road worlds, not just in one year, but ever. Ever, ever, yeah. And, and I know I keep saying the last thing. Uh, the Dutch, which believe it or not, I mean, this is what, this is a true, in terms of countries, it is a cycling powerhouse. They have not won the world road championships since Joop Zoetemelk won it in 1985. I mean, that's almost as long as goes is 1993. <laughs> uh, see what I did there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's the same the same amount of years as the French never won the tour since 1985. You know. That that's easier to as far as I'm concerned that's easier to believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. They, they just they just haven't had the talent, but the Dutch? Yeah. Give, but, what, but give, it, give it, us it, your take your, your thoughts, uh, high level thoughts. Well, I mean, you know, if you First of all, I think we have to we have to break down the course in two parts. The first part, you know, not not very interesting. 120k, 130k. We had that strike, a 55 minute break. That that's something mm. difficult to deal with. But uh, the race really starts when you get to the circuit, right? And that circuit has been studied, and um, I've counted 44 90 degree turns per circuit. 40. Come on. Yeah. So that's 440 turns. <laughs> this circuit, I mean, if you look at Van der Poel and Van Aert, and here again, I'm going to say what I said in April. I think personally that, that Van der Poel is a, a, a tiny bit better bike handler than well Van Aert turning in the turns. But if you think about it, you know, like that's, if these guys, let's say they're both on the same level, right, in, in, t- in terms of bike skills. They easily take 0.5 seconds per turn on the rest, just by just going just normally on their bike. And okay, this well, was, that that's 120 seconds. No, wait, but no, sorry, two, 220 seconds. 0.5 seconds per turn. Anyways, <laughs> you, you add up all the turns. <laughs> yeah, that's some quick math. Yeah. Um, and, and this this is just you know, this is probably a good time for um, us to play. Uh, your opinion on uh, the rivalry. I mean, it really is. Uh, and you can see it, the rivalry between Matthew mm. Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert. So we'll, um, this is, this is your chance. Here we go. Play it away. This was from back in April. Yeah. Van der Poel won already two times the Tour of Flanders and he was two times second. And now he won Paris-Roubaix. Wout Van Aert has not won either of them. In my opinion, uh, Matthew Van der Poel is born a bigger talent He's more of a winner, more of a killer. Oh, no, no. This is doing no, this no, 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 That's my opinion. Stop. You have to stop. <laughs> did, you <not> watch, <laughs> did, did, did you not watch the Tour de France the last couple of years? Spy? Yo, yo, hon, yo, hon. Uh, ask, ask the so you guys don't let me finish my sentence. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Johan, what, what the fuck do you want us to say, right? You're the one who's <laughs> always right about these things anyways. So that's uh, uh, congratulations. Yeah. You, you were right yet again. No, I mean, it's not, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about... 
you know, I, I just think, listen, and, and Van Aert is an amazing rider. He's the quality. Of I just think that the quality of him as a rider is not being translated in results. You know, if you look, if you look at today, Van Aert, this, this year has only won two races, only mm. two races the whole year. And he's mm. such an amazing rider. He has won one monument, right? Milan San Remo, uh, when, during the COVID, when Milan San Remo was in the fall. In the meantime, you know, Van der Poel has won two times the Tour of Flanders. Milan San Remo, Paris Roubaix is now world champion. The guy is a killer. You know, that's what I wanted to say with, uh, I'm not saying that the one is better than the other. They're very, they're very equal. And, and, you know, the proof is there again, once again, first and second. But for some reason, I'm seeing Van, der, Van Aert a lot of times in second and Van der Poel a lot of times in first. Let's not forget, it's, it's, Johan. I mean, the sorry, guys. The the lead up, the build up to the World Championships was a lot different between these two. I mean, yeah. Van Art was the workhorse for uh, Team Jumbo. For Jonas, had to go in every day, everything he had, barely mm -hmm. make it to the finish line. Where Vanderpool maybe was dealing with a little bit of illness, but essentially was training through the Tour de France. That's Came true. To the World Championships in peak form. So I think the build up. It's not quite fair to say he's better because of this, because I think the build up was a lot different. Yeah, but it's, it's true. I mean, and, and Van der Poel definitely, I mean, he 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 did uh, struggle with some illness during the tour, but I've heard inside stories that in the Gruppetto, in the mountain stages, that he was doing his own thing and he was basically doing interval trainings on the climbs in the oh, Gruppetto. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that favored Wout Van Aert to get that early break from the tour to go home because of the, the newborn I mean, it was just a couple of days. He only missed, what, okay. what did he miss? Uh, three, four stages. I mean, four, four, I think four, four, four stages, but then also, you know, the stress with the birth of a baby and, you know, less sleep and stuff like that. I think it's also, it's not ideal, you know, it's not ideal. And he fully oh. admitted he's, he, he, I saw his interview he said, I just couldn't follow. I mean, yeah. he was, he was, I think there for uh, a few seconds and he just couldn't follow the wheel. That's, that's how strong he was. By the way, can I just say one thing? Like that's you know, like uh, Matthew Vanderpool's like calls his girlfriend after the stage. She's like, "How was the stage?" He's like, "It was a great workout. Did some, <laughs> did some intervals. Did some, yeah. did some big sign some work. autographs. Yeah, you know, just I, I, I stopped and then chased back up just to do some work. That's <laughs> well, as as uh, Johan mentioned in outcomes yesterday, he and Spencer broke down this race almost to perfection of how it was going to play out. And, and you specifically said, you know, Johan had calculated that, that Vanderpool will be able to gain half a second on every one of these corners. Hmm. And that's where the handling comes into play. Does that. It's not only, it's, it's, it's not only that when you're that good at cornering, you can, you don't have to spend as much energy in positioning because you know that a lot of times you can move up 10, 15, 20 spots for free without even trying. Mm. Just by taking your line because you are so confident in your corning ability. But one thing that really stand up stood out to me was Vanderpool hit the best in the first uh, 180 kilometers. We barely saw him. Where we saw guys like Matt Peterson, we saw Pogachar, we saw Van Aert at the front going with every move. Vanderpool, you barely saw him do anything until it mm. really, really mattered. Yeah, that that that's that's right, and and that's what you have to do is just risk losing the race because right. you know, perhaps you miss a move or you're in the wrong position, stuck behind a crash or in a crash. Um, you got to risk it and save it. Um, I thought way, it was, uh, I thought speak. it was interesting is what he said also after the race, like you know, and like when he went, it was planned. He already mm. he he felt already that he was still strong and that the other guys were fading. So that was not just a try. He was that was just you know, attacking and going for it. And you could see clearly, you know, we, we, we could see that Pogacar was trying to, starting to be a little bit less. Um, Peterson had done a lot of work and, and, and uh, you know, when, when Van Aert tried to follow, all of a sudden he had to sit down and Van der Poel did not sit down once until past the crest of that climb. And he so, was gone. He was gone. And so, and so, Johan, that's definitely a feeling you have. You're with Van Aert, you're with Peterson, you're with Pogacar. And you're not closing the gap down to Bethiel as quickly as you'd think you would. I mean, they they hung it like 20, 30 seconds for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So somebody like Vanderpool has got those legs going, wait, why are we not closing the gap? He can close it, but he's not going to show them that he can close it that easily. Obviously, he doesn't want them to know. But as soon as he got in sight and they hit that climb, yeah, there was, there was no hesitation. He was gone. Which, yeah. which with what would you say, 44 corners per lap, it is hard, it's hard to keep somebody in sight. 
right? With that many corners, they get out of sight and that, you know, you know, the expression yeah, I mean, it's the, 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 it's hard to keep them there. Yeah. Even, even when he crashed, I mean, he, uh, when he crashed, uh, I mean, we should, we should, I think we should definitely talk about that. That's of course a big, but when he crashed, he had about 30 seconds and not even then did they see him afterwards. Yeah. He was up obviously very, very quick, but, but, you know, I, I would like to know what you guys think about this circuit guys. Um, Let's, yeah. Um, well, but just real quick, John, on, on the crash, because it, it, as you're watching and he's clearly riding away, you're like, well, there's only this, this seems to be over. There's only one thing that can change the outcome and that's a crash. And, and of course he did uh, crash in that right-hander. I was sh shocked that how quickly he got up. I suppose that's also a, a nice added benefit of, of racing um, when it was raining. Cause he just, he, he slid more than impacted the boy. He got up quick and I'm sitting here watching going, is there a mechanic has the bike has to be broken or something. Yeah. Of course it wasn't the bike. Um, it was his right shoe. So his little boa, um, fastening thing that they, a lot of the shoes these days have just busted right off. And you saw he hit right on the foot and he had to finish the race. And George, you tell us now is probably a good time to tell us about your experiment, but he did not have, he had a loose shoe and continued mm -hmm. to ride away. Yeah. Continued to put time on them. And I actually went out for a gravel ride with a couple of buddies right after the, and I, purposely un, 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 unloosened my top buckle there on my gravel shoes and just to feel what it felt like, especially on the steep climbs. And yeah, I mean, your foot's just moving around everywhere. So just a matter, imagine, uh, you know, 15 K to go and you're 30 seconds ahead of the, some of the best riders in the world and your foot's just kind of mushing around, obviously affected the pedal stroke. This guy's a freaking gladiator. I mean, nothing phased him. He just kept going, putting time on them and looked like wasn't taking any, uh, less chances on the corners. He kept just mm -hmm. bombing those descents until 5K to go, which was on the edge. Scary, I know time. for all of us. Yeah, on the edge for all of us watching that was just incredibly impressive. Okay, so, so the circuit, you, you, you have questions about the circuits? I, I don't. Uh, can I go first? Because I don't have strong. Sure. I mean, I watch it on TV, and, and obviously 44 right hand turn or 90 degree turns per circuit is, is excessive. And, and it looked like that as I'm watching. I'm like, this. This looks like a big criterion, which I don't, I don't think is right. Um, but it is what it is. Right. And, and as we said at the top of the show, this is uh, this, this is what they've dubbed the super worlds. They have all the events there. Um, of course you can design the circuit uh, in, in a large city like Glasgow with less corners. Um, but you know, in, in some way that they were playing with the hand they were dealt um, and the rain didn't help. Right. And it was, it was sort of this, typical British rain where they would show the breakaway and they'd be getting dumped on rain. And 45 seconds later, they show the Peloton and it's like almost sunny. I'm like, wait a minute, is this the same race? But uh, I think you have concerns too, you about the, the condition of the, the road surfaces. Yeah. I mean, and I think, I think today they were kind of fortunate that, that it rained only in the last two or three laps, because mm. if this rain, if it rains before and that you have this whole Peloton coming in, this would have been a whole different game. You know, an urban circuit like that, and especially the the, the state of the pavement, there was there was three, four, there was asphalt, there was concrete, there were flat cobblestones, and then lots of patches and and you know filled up potholes, which I personally think it was world championship unworthy. Mm -hmm. um, it you know, I'm you know I'm going to be wrong because because you know it we saw a great race, and the three best riders were on the podium, yeah. right. That's that's the thing, but but I think if you would ask the riders, including the winner, what they think of this course, they would say this is madness. Hmm. I don't know. I like the course. I I thought it was very exciting. I thought the 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 camera angles were super fun, interesting to watch. The faces of the riders in slow motion, just the cornering. We we got this a world champion that not only can climb but can corner, uh, can can save himself in a two hundred and seventy kilometer race. Uh, I, I liked it because it, I feel like it had added every attribute you need in cycling to be successful. Like there, there was nothing missing in there. Those climbs, descending corners, uh, very technical. I, I liked the course and, and the spectators. I thought it was just, I mean, thousands of people on the side of the road. It was just really cool for me. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people might not agree with that, but uh, yeah, it's just, I think there was how, a lot of things, a lot of things wrong about, about the course, for example, and not, not, 
now that I see here behind me, not these ones, but the fences around the course, the old fashioned fences yeah. with sticking out feet. I mean, that's the, the, you can't have that in a world championships. That's, mm. that's just, you know, just that's from another era. I mean, all I could think watching this course is this is nothing like any stage in a grand tour or any one day classic that they race all year. So it, it it's not similar to anything that suggests they're the best at this discipline. I don't know. I could be wrong. Like it was just like Lan I'm with Lance. It looked like a criterion. It's completely sort. different, JB. First of all, the world championships, and this is another thing that I think is very strange. Uh, you know, if you win this race, you're the world champion. You have this special jersey for a whole year. And it's the only race that you race against your teammates, you know, with 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 yeah. with countries. And then on top of that, there's no communication in the race. For example, when Van Aert and yeah. Pedersen and Pogaccia were chasing, they did not know that Van der Poel had crashed. They had no clue. Hmm. They probably only found out at the finish that he crashed. Yeah, so, with, with radios, that makes it a big difference. Because instantly yeah. they would know he crashed. They would know that they if they speed up a little bit, they get him back in sight. Then it's a whole different scenario, you yeah, know, well, perhaps, if uh, with radios. I think the Van der Poel of today would not have been brought back with or without radios. Uh, I, no, totally he's agree. So much, yeah. he's so much better. Yeah, agreed. Um, we'll keep talking about it. We're also talking about the riders um, who just disappointed. There, there was there were some that really stuck out, um, uh, uh, especially the local boys. <laughs> Uh, but before we do, today's show also brought to you by Eight Sleep. Summer is reaching its apex, and there's nothing worse than tossing, turning, sweating in the night because of the summer heat. The pod cover by Eight Sleep will keep you cool all night, all the way down to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, so you wake up fully refreshed. This is particularly important for elite athletes and cyclists because sleeping cool improves deep sleep and overall sleep quality, which enhances the body's recovery. Now I get sent a lot of these hacks, right? Let's call them hacks. And this, my wife, by the way, it's our anniversary today. So congratulations, babe. Congratulations. Um, it, all right. Good day. Um, she told me the other day, she's like, you know what? This is actually the coolest thing that anybody's ever, she's not a good sleeper. So she's like, this is the coolest thing that anybody's ever sent you. <laughs> I was like, well, then why don't you come talk about it on the show? But it is. I mean, you can and you can customize the temperature. It's been a game changer. Um, I'm I'm a pretty good sleeper, but I've noticed a difference in my sleep, and so and so is she. So really cool. Head on over to Eight Sleep. You got to spell it out: e i g h t eight sleep dot com slash the move. That saves you 150 bucks on the pod cover. Stay cool this summer with Eight Sleep. Now shipping within the United States, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU, and down under in Australia. Uh, also today, last one brought to you by Huckberry. Huckberry is building the future of retail for active, adventurous guys where style and adventure converge. Millions of folks trust them as their one-stop men's shop for discovering and shopping well-crafted products. Now, we all went around uh, on the website and we we curated our own um, gift bag, so to speak. As the, we being, Johan, you haven't done it yet. We got to get you on there. No, that'd be fun. See what Johan picks. You know. <laughs> And we talked about a lot in the tour, you know, I was you know, picking like dope shirts and hats and stuff. JB got meat seasoner and pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we should have Johan send one. Okay, I'll, we, I'll, I'll have a look at the, on the website. Yeah. We did our own, um, our own, our own gift bag for each of us. And we, and we curated it for y'all. The, the other thing that they've been really promoting and selling a ton of, and we're getting a lot of questions on socials of, all of our workouts is people are curious about these shoes. Every, I mean, every time I'm getting dozens of comments, Hey, what shoes are those? What shoes are those? Uh, they're the Nordas for, to, for if y'all are, if anybody ever asked on social media and you're listening now, Norda, N O R D A. I love these things. It's a badass trail shoe, Canadian company, but uh, big partners of Huckberry as well. So check out our store over at huckberry.com slash the move. That's huckberry.com slash the move. Um, well, what happened to the, to the, um, the local boys, the Brits, boy, I haven't seen them. They only had two finishers. The best finisher was in 18th place. Tom Pitcock, he would, he would, obviously he's, um, also focusing on the mountain bike race, but this would have been a perfect circuit for him, but just a boy, a tough day out for the Brits. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously if Pitcock 
made that decision is because he thinks that he has serious chances to win the world championships mountain biking. He's going to come across a certain Matthew Vanderpool, which there. is going to be just fascinating. Uh, and then we'll see, you know, what the specialist mountain bikers uh, are worth against those guys. But, but I, I agree. I mean, Pitcock, this was, this was a dream course for him. Mm. Dream course for any, him. Any, uh, any updates on the uh, Vanderpool hurt himself at all, or he's just road rash is fine. Because obviously uh, the, the adrenaline after that crash, you probably don't feel anything winning the world championship, but we'll hopefully wakes up feeling okay he, tomorrow. He could be a little dinged up for the mountain bike course is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Uh, he looked fine to me. <laughs> I, th- I think the extent of his problems were he's going to need a new right shoe. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. But that now you, now, that- Wait, now you guys are painting a really amazing picture. You were already impressed that it was cross world championship and road world championship. Exactly. In the same season. Throw mountain bike in there. Yep. This is going to yeah. be one of the most unbelievable things we've we've ever seen. And don't think for a, don't think for a second he's not thinking about that. Yeah, and that that's that's that that's a that's unheard of. This, I don't even like to talk about it that much because <laughs> people are going to keep going back to this clip of Johan just laughing at us when we're <laughs> we're just. It's almost like we were bipolar or something. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I think I think I think just to go back, I, the guy obviously can do whatever he wants, but he's just spent the last two months. I mean, doing the Tour of Belgium, the Tour de France, uh, the World Championships. I doubt he spent any time on his mountain bike. So what's he going to do? Is do two or three, three days this week and try to get ready for it? It's going to be a hard task. His form is no doubt amazing, but um, you know, George, these guys have George, been. Lotta Kopecky just won the world title on the track. She just finished the Tour de France. She just mm-hmm. literally an hour ago, she won the the scratch race. Wow! You know, there. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, from these pers- guys, these guys are really special. You know, like these three guys, Van der Poel, Pitcock, and and Van Aert. They're multidisciplinary. And I think you know we we're talking a lot about Van der Poel and Van Aert, but you know, hats off to Tadej Pogačar. You know, I mean, this guy. Yeah. Drop him in any race, any type of race. He's up there with the best in the world. You know, yep. I mean, he already beat Van der Poel and Van Aert in their backyard on the Tour of Flanders. But after the Tour de France and after the trouble he had, he, you know, recovered and is up there and gets the bronze medal. Pretty George, impressive. can I, let me ask you a question. I'm curious, because um, you were saying that he hasn't spent much time on the mountain bike. Are you talking about... Uh, just the position or are you talking about the technical skills? Cause it is very different. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of folks look at it and like, he's just pedaling a bike. The position is different, but also just the hand eye, the, the coordination of all of that. Are, are you talking about yeah. position or the technical piece of the course? For, for him, all of the above. I mean, he's struggled with mm. back issues before in the past. You get on a mountain bike, everything's different. Um, you're, uh, he's obviously super good technically, but, I don't know what the core the mountain bike course is like, but obviously it's going to be a very technical course uh, where you got these specialists that have just been on the mountain bike training and training for this type of race, which is an hour long. This was six hours. I mean, it's a completely different effort. I don't, I don't know. Mm. I don't know how, how, how we, he will do it again. I don't understand a lot of things in cycling anymore. I mean, like today, for instance, we're seeing some of the best guys in the world, 140, 100, 180 to 140 kilo sprinting up these hills <laughs> like full gas lead out and it's like it, it then they keep going and going and going and only the best survive four guys left at the end it's just the 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 racing is so hard these days they go so hard i mean there was full on you know legit cycling countries that probably didn't have any guys that finished you know some of the best yeah. cycling countries in the world probably didn't even make it to the finish line this race was that hard um, so it's just the, the sport's Peterson, crazy now. Peterson, for example, with over 100k to go, was going full gas already. I mean, that guy, wow. yeah, that guy did an incredible race. I mean, you know, he, I mean, un- unfortunately, one of the four had to fall off the of the podium. Uh, but what he spent, this guy, and be and still being on there, the guy, you know, the guy's really, I mean, great rider, big championship rider. Um, but to come back on the, on the, on the mountain bike, George, you know, normally, normally it, it would not make any sense if Van der Poel is up there competing with these guys. It, 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 it cannot be normally, you know, because, but it's Matthew Van der Poel, you know, I'm done betting against this guy. Yeah. Yeah, Um, I mean, 
You go and from a 270 kilometer race where you kind of just start out, you hide in the Peloton, you know, got like Matthew Dunpole, like we mentioned earlier in the show, did an amazing jog of height. And we barely saw him until 100K to go. Where on the mountain bike, you're sprinting full gas from the gun mm -hmm. as hard as you can to establish your position. Um, completely different effort. But, but it's, it's also fun to watch. It's something also that's that's being transmitted to the to the younger categories. For example, the guy, the Danish rider who won the the world championships, juniors. Um, I forgot his name now. Uh, is also participating in a mountain bike race on Thursday, mm -hmm. and and yeah. is in with a shot apparently. I think he's yeah he's he's won uh, all the national titles in mountain bike and mountain biking. I think he's European champion mountain biking. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he just won the worlds. You know, I mean, on the roads. Well, one thing, one another thing we saw today, which was interesting, is unless you did the Tour de France, you had no chance today. Wow. Like the guys, right. the guys that didn't, they yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how hard they trained, they could not match the workload that the riders did that's today. Right. Only the guys that did the tour were able well, to be up there. I, but that's not surprising now, is it? I think the thing that's so different to your point, George, of just how good the entire peloton. Forget the first four, the podium, the, the Mount Rushmore, but the whole peloton is strong. So if, mm -hmm. if they're all that good and that much better, well, they're going to recover better, right? And, and and we know what it was like to do the late summer classics back in the day. If you didn't, it's very difficult if you didn't do the tour. But we needed longer to recover, and maybe that's just one of the, another one of these things we can throw in the kitty, where this is just different. Like <laughs> three weeks stage race, okay, I'll, I'll chill yeah. for a few days, and then let's go race the worlds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do have got to have, I mean, hundreds more resources at their disposal for recovery yeah, compared for sure. to your 20 years ago. Oh yeah. Um, there was a lot of buildup before the race, uh, as there is seemingly, um, uh, every time you put together a Belgian national team between, you know, how the Belgians decide between Mount Van Aert and Remco of Annapol. Now, Johan, you know, George has these man crushes. I know you have one, right? Your, your man Remco was, he was just, I think you mentioned he got caught out early and 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 had to kind of claw his way back, but he he just didn't have it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I think on, on this, first of all, on this course, um, you know, if you compare his skills towards Van der Poel, Van Aert, even Pogacar, he's nowhere near as technical. Um, and uh, you know, he came to the front at some point, but the the amount of energy it had cost him already, there was no way. Um and 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 I think you know I mean there was this there was this big uh, controversy that there was too many leaders and I actually spoke to the to the Belgian coach uh, two days ago and you know I said listen these things solve themselves you know there was there was this debate about Philipson Philipson has never been in the race right so he was already and then it was clear from from the after three after three uh, laps that Van Aert was going to be the leader of the of the team but yeah. Uh -huh. um, even a pool didn't have a good day. Um, I did. I, I mean, I on a course like this, I expected this. Let's not forget also that even a pool was, pre was preparing on the Tourmalet on uh, for the for the Vuelta because the the Vuelta goes to the Tourmalet this year uh, mm -hmm. until like four days before the before before the World Championships, and he still has the the time trial, which I think he will win. By the way, the time trial, the World Championships time trial. Hmm. I do. I do need to uh, retract my statement one bit because I can't believe I didn't mention Tom Scusians, which is, was a former rider for my yep. team. Uh, he did not race the Tour de France, and he ended up getting fifth place, which is an extremely impressive eight, result. Eight, eight. Oh, he got he had eighth place. Okay, um, but still, he was up there and looking really good throughout the whole the, the whole day. Um, so clearly, he he trained really well at home. The other thing you said too in the in the members meeting before Han Johan, which. It's just hilarious. We we discussed that there was this protest, and they had to they did one of these uh, environmental protests. Did I hear? Did I? Did I? Were apparently glued to the road. Or I was going to say, did I read that they glued themselves to the road? Yeah. I mean, how, do you, how, how do you do that? Like, it looked like concrete. It was like those like the the construction glue. You know, like so. But I saw I saw some pictures of police guys with with a hammer trying to get them from from the road. Um, but yeah, I mean, what I said, George uh, and Lance, was that, you know, 55 minutes of break. And um, I heard from, uh, I, I, I read from uh, the, the Dutch coach, Koos Moedenhout, uh, that Matthew van der Poel 
all of a sudden had a great idea. He went to look for a house and asked those people if uh, he could go to the toilet and he came out a, a, a few pounds lighter. <laughs> so we're, we're just, just so we're clear, we're talking about number two, not number, number two. one. Number Wait, two. was that, was that during the, the protest holdup? During the 55 minutes. Okay. Break, yeah. I mean, this is, and these people probably were like, God, this is so weird. This bike race is coming by. And one of these guys, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they were watching the race and they like, they took up, they looked at him and they were like, they knew what he looked like. like yeah, this guy came Asked if he could take a which, shit in our house. And, which, by the way, and then, and then like the three, way, hour, three hours later, they turn on the TV. They're like, "Wait, that's <laughs> the guy that took a shit in our house. He's the world champion." By, somebody, by the wait, way, and the guy's yelling at his wife, "Did you flush it?" <laughs> <laughs> so think about that. If he, if he did have to go to the bathroom and he wasn't able to run to the bathroom because of that protest, I mean, this could have been a whole completely different bike <laughs> miserable. Because as right? you know. If you have to, that going on, you're not going to be performing yeah. very well. There, there's, there's so many ways we could take this conversation, which we probably <laughs> shouldn't. We've already taken it far <laughs> enough. Yeah. But what, but what, in all seriousness, um, it, a 55 minute start with it without, I mean, you've got some team cars there, but that is like starting over. 55 minutes is enough for the body to completely yeah. cool down. And when they, you know, when they, get, when they apparently jackhammered the protesters off the road, uh, that's like starting over and, mm -hmm. you know, there's not obviously in the team cars, there's not trainers and there's not ways that you can keep the body warm and spend the legs. Like you're just standing there. Um, that that's a, yeah, you know, five minutes, the body's, you know, 10 yeah. minutes, the body's still sort of humming and still warm 55 minutes. That's all the way down to cool. And you're starting over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's that's a show. long time. That yeah. must have been, and you know, also they did, you know, because they stopped and they, but they didn't know when they were going to start again. So, you know, what do you do? You start to eat, you go sit down. What, I mean, what do you do? I mean, and luckily it didn't rain. I mean, imagine it would have been raining. There's no buses, not nothing out there. Well, at, and a good point. It messes up. You know, these guys are so dialed on the nutrition, mm -hmm. right? They know every yeah. quarter hour, every, you know, eat, drink, eat, drink. And t totally messes up the nutrition plan yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, probably a better question to ask you guys in a week, but so far, how do you feel about this super world's concept every four years? Are you liking it? Is it growing on you? It's, I think it's strange. Um, you know, be between the tour and the Vuelta, um, but especially what I, what I find strange is that like normally what, the world championships builds up towards the man elite event the last day. Right. And now it's done, but we still have 10 days to go in the world yeah, championships. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, obviously, you know, the calendar comes into place. Most of the, I mean, they have to adapt for the, the man professionals that they can participate in the Vuelta. The reason why the women's world championships is later because they just come off the tour de France. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, uh, it's, I mean, it must be a logistical nightmare. Yeah. I, 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 I JB, I, I like it. I kind of like it. And I, you know, y'all know it takes everything inside of me uh, to, to approve of anything David Leparchian does, but I, I think it's cool. And I did, I, by the way, I did not know. I thought this was just a one and done thing. I did not know that there there's talk of scheduling this every four years. Um, I, I, I think it's cool. I think let's let it play out. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think it's and, good and, and it also elevates the other events. Like, listen, if you ask me when the BMX World Championships was last year, <laughs> right? I, I couldn't tell you when it was, where yeah. it was, who won, male or female. Yeah. Um. So I th I think it elevates a lot of these other events. I I I'm, I tend to I I I approve. I like it. There's, pro, there's pros and cons. I, I what I like, for example, I've been watching some of the track events. And they've integrated the 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 paracyclists into the the world championships uh track, which is which is really nice, you know, because normally if that's a separate event, it it gets no attention at all, or not the attention it would deserve. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, I think you're right, Lance. I watched I watched downhill, which I've never watched. Mm, I, I yeah, watched women's track and I watched junior men's road race. Like this, mm. these are all these are three things I've never before uh paid attention to so it is good for all disciplines yeah i agree yeah. i like it i like it I, I think it will be viewed uh in a very positive light and then we'll see yeah 
anything else? Any loose ends to tie up? Other than Venable's so. <laughs> shoe? <laughs> <laughs> That's a collectible shoe. I hope he doesn't just yeah. discard that, right? Yeah, That's I, hope he, a story. I, hope, I, hope he, I hope he auctions that off. And a lot of our viewers may not know this, but we're always we always carry spare shoes in our rain bag in the right. team cars. Just in the, the the very rare instance something like that happens. Obviously, he didn't have time to change shoes, but all the guys will have a spare 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 pair of shoes in their rain bag in the yeah. team car. But George, in in a world championships like this, the car first of all can't get there. Yeah, yeah, I can't get there. Speaking of speaking of that, like these bags with those spare shoes, you know, I I've known a rider once. Um, he uh, he had spare shoes in his uh, in his in his rain bag, and and there was no shoe plates on. <laughs> and he's that, it wasn't he, me, right? He, he's, on, he's on the screen. Uh, and and not you. Uh, it's, it, it, wait, it's not it's not George or JB. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. That's funny. That's funny. That's okay. That's fucking funny. All right. But the, the, I'm, the guy, I, I, I'm the guy that would show with no shoes. So yeah, you're yeah. at least a leg up on that. I, I, and I'm trying to remember exactly how I got exposed there on, on, on uh, shoe gate there, but it was, yeah. I don't know if you were snooping in my shoe, in my rain bag. Cause here, oh, just as a little background. So the, the, the rain bag, as it's uh, referred to, you know, sits in the back of the team car. You have, uh, obviously a raincoat in there, you, you know, probably some gloves. If the weather changes, which of course it can uh, a lot of times in the races that you're just, you have some emergency backup stuff. And in case of a crash, like we saw today with Vanderpool or, you know, in the old days, a lot of days at times um, um, your cleat, your cycling cleat would break if you got in a big crash and you'd have to go to a spare shoe. And uh, I don't know how I got outed, but maybe Johan said, you know, <laughs> I just want to make sure Lance has uh, all the stuff. I'll tell you exactly how it went. Uh, yeah, I'll, I figured. I figured you remember. You no. Know? So, what happens is your the director's driving. There's a mechanic in the back, and you come for something, or somebody says, "Hey, Lance needs arm warmers." Okay, then the mechanic turns around, gets in the in the trunk, gets Lance's back, finds the arm warmers. Okay, gives them, you know, and then he has this this bag, you know, and then okay, the guy goes back with the arm warmers. Lance, nothing. Okay, everything's fine, and then I. I and and then the mechanic told me and I'm, it was pink pants Chris mm -hmm. Chris Chris pink mm -hmm. pants mm -hmm. and he said and he says hey Johan look at this <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I said young 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 listen listen this fucking spare shoes I, I did I like I was I was probably some race I was feeling good I'll like I'll just pedal around with my barefoot. I don't mind. <laughs> that is, that is really I can just imagine. His name is his name the mechanic's name is a sweet sweet guy, Chris Van Roosbrook. Um, who is now guy. a mechanic of the of Marty van der Poel by the way. Let's see. Oh. That that, that yeah. that's awesome. Um but uh so we called him Pink Pants because that's the translation <laughs> from Flemish to English, but uh I can just see Pink Pants pulling that thing out going Holy fuck. This guy's won how many tours? <laughs> what? Yeah. But, I mean, you cannot do or, or, or that. You can't be a bigger amateur. With, with this, especially, with, with especially, that. especially with how much time you guys spent with making sure your spare bike was absolutely perfect. <laughs> if you needed a spare bike, it was good. If you need a spare pair of shoes without cleats, that wouldn't uh, be in your helpful. defense, In your defense, Lance, I think it was uh, in the preseason. It was not the tour. It was not the tour. No, uh, and you had just changed model shoes, and so I guess you brought two new pairs of shoes, and you just put one pair in the rain bag, but then and, and, put any and that's the other thing is it was not because with a with a used pair of shoes, you you would after time had there been a cleat on there, you would see where that cleat was. This was the brand new pair, so if if I you know God forbid I needed a, a spare shoe. Uh, pink pants in the back probably had a cleat in his toolbox. <laughs> he would have been like, I have no fucking idea where to put this cleat on this shoe. I mean, you guys know I used to pedal right heel out, left heel in. I mean, I would have gotten, he'd have handed me this thing. I'd have been like right heel in. <laughs> it would have been, <laughs> yeah. you would have had no idea how to set them up. God, yeah. you know. Well, here we are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations to Matthew Vanderpool uh, and to Johan. Yeah, see, it's it comes back around. Yeah, um, I knew it. I knew it. And and just makes the mountain bike. I mean, I think to this point we were saying about how the Super Worlds has elevated all of the events. Boy, now everybody has to watch mountain bike. Yeah, World Championships just to see. I mean, this this it's already been historic. 
Can he go yeah. on and, and make it even more so? so? I mean, doing things like this is, if it's never happened before, that, that tells you it's probably not going to happen for a long time. Mm -hmm. So if he goes and adds the mountain bike world championships, we'll all be gone. Yeah, he's, got no, he's got no pressure. I mean, he's, he's road world champion. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun thing for him. And, and my guess, and he is, uh, um, and obviously we, uh, that last four, any of the uh, Mads Peterson's already been a world champion. Any of those four guys win. I think you, the whole, the cycling community, whether it's the press or the riders or the teams, those are worthy world champions. I mean, we have Matthew yes. Van, he's going to wear the rainbow Jersey for 12 months and he should, I mean, that uh, he's, he's very worthy. I wonder, I wonder how many world championship jerseys he has already. You know, uh, I, I know he, I know he won in the juniors. Should we call Spencer? One or two, <laughs> mm -hmm. five in the, in the cyclocross. And so, so at that's at least his eight, his eight world, world championships. Wow. Like I said, a, a very worthy champion. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a great representative of the sport. So, all right, let's get out of here. George is, uh, you know, both these guys, George and JB are headed to the lake. That's right. They're it's back a, behind it's those. 100, are, it's 105 here. You got, you, to, got, you got to go to the water. <laughs> if, if for those watching on YouTube, uh, behind those curtains, behind George is a beautiful, he's in a lake house. It's a view of the lake. Now, mind you, none of us have been. None of us have really been invited, but we're going to end the show on that note. And George is going to go out on the lake, wake surf, just, you know, hit some bars on the lake. <laughs> hey, I'll be thinking, about, I'll be thinking of y'all, though. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, quick note, I'm taking a couple friends in the move out on the lake. So you may remember when you, we went to Orlando and our friend Sean Moore hooked us mm -hmm. up with the, at the Four Seasons. Yep. His family's in town. And then another friend of the move, Victoria Kramer, who oh, we, cool. all, we all met on our show at the 24 Hours of Old Pueblo. Yeah. Which uh, she's in town for some business. And so we're all, we're all going to jump on the lake together. Awesome. You're going to be you're riding around in, in, in your daughter's champion wake surf board, uh, boat. And it's, you know, well, these things are like 200 grand. These, pe these folks are going to roll up and be like, damn. That podcasting thing's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> looks, looks like it's amazing to me how much boats cost these days. But like, oh. they're gonna be like, damn, dude, it helps to have a daughter with a with talent and a yeah. hookup. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll chat soon. Okay, ciao, ciao, ciao.